I'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Days are filled with sorrow and care hearts are lonely and drear burdens are lifted at calvary jesus is very near burdens are lifted at calvary 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 burdens are lifted at calvary jesus is very near cast your care on jesus today Leave your worry and fear Burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus is very near Burdens are lifted at Calvary Calvary, Calvary Burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus is very near Troubled soul the Savior can see Every heartache and tear Burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus is very near Burdens are lifted at Calvary Calvary, Calvary Burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus is very near Burdens are lifted at Calvary Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Until that is a reality in your life, it's just a song. I may know that. Just a song. For some, it has become a reality. I mean, no, you can still take your burdens to Calvary by faith. You can still take your cares to the Lord. You can still cast all your care upon the Lord. Amen? Aren't you glad that we have a mediator between us and God the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous? who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some unrighteousness, but all unrighteousness. I believe we're living in a time when the Word of God is going in one ear and out the other, and it's not getting into the heart. Are you listening? We see the Lord saying to the Shulamite, Open to me, my love, my dove, my undefiled. Open to me. Are you listening? God is desiring something more than just what is on the surface. I may know that. He's desiring something more than just a social relationship with you and I. He desires a spiritual relationship. Right? He desires for you and I to worship him in spirit and in truth. In fact, he doesn't just desire that, he requires it. Amen. And we should require that of ourselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I didn't plan these messages. Uh, had no thought of the idea that in a few days we're going to, the world is going to be celebrating a pagan holiday called Easter and the church will be recognizing the resurrection. I had no idea of that when the Lord gave me this message. And the next message I'll be sharing tomorrow.
or the next day. But these are messages the Lord wants us to hear. And they're not messages I just picked because it's getting to be that time of the year. How many know that there are going to be some that are going to be glorified with the Lord? How many know that? Not just called and chosen and justified, but glorified. How many know that? Oh, yeah. The Lord is going to have a bride. Going to be glorified with him. Amen. <clears throat> we begin with with prayer. Father in heaven, we know, Lord, without you we can do nothing. We'd be wasting our time, Lord, if it wasn't for your will and your anointing, your help. Our words would just be vain. They would be empty. But Lord, we know we have your mind and we have your, your word for your people today. We pray, Lord, that your people will be attentive. They'll open their hearts to receive the truth, Lord. That it will become a reality. It'll become an experience in their life and not just words, Lord, and just a form and a ritual, but it'll become a reality, a, a reality in their lives. They'll begin to experience that resurrection power in their life, that virtue of the Son of God. We ask, Lord, that you bless and anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We begin with Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12, and we have quite a few verses of Scripture we're going to go through. So you may want to buckle up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you may be able to hang on all the way to the end. Some of you will fall off probably before we get through the first few verses. Maybe the first verse. Are you listening? You got to hang on. You got to endure sound doctrine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2. In verse 12, buried with him in baptism. Buried with him in baptism. I mean, no, he's not talking about water baptism. You don't experience the operation of God dying to self and being resurrected with Christ by being water baptized, as some would make you to believe. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. The operation of God. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Did you hear that? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's exactly what we're reading here in Colossians. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. The operation of God is to die to self and be raised with Christ in his resurrection. Are you listening? And this is done through faith. Colossians 
Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ through the operation of God, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If ye then be risen with Christ through the operation of God, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this is where Christ sitteth, sits on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth with the Father at his right hand. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. So when we read in the scripture that we are to seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, he's talking about the throne. If you then are res risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Remember the previous message we were sharing with you that Jesus Christ's prayer is going to be answered? Father, that they may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Do you see what the Holy Ghost is saying to us, folks? Through the operation of God, that we can be raised up to be seated with Christ in his throne through the operation of God. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Again, this is through the operation of God. Anybody listening? For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's not superficial. There is a real death to the self-life. You are dead through the operation of God by being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Not baptized in water. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice the next verse. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Do you? Do you frustrate his grace in your life? Do you hinder the work of God? Do you grieve the Holy Spirit? I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Are you listening, people? It's through the operation of God. It's through faith that it might be by grace. It's got nothing to do with trying to keep the law of God or try to keep the Ten Commandments not about the law. Are you listening? The law has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus, and when you and I walk by faith and not by sight, the law is fulfilled. Anybody listening? Abraham didn't have the Ten Commandments, and we're supposed to fall in the steps of Abraham. But greater than that, we're supposed to be following the steps of Jesus Christ. 
Before Abraham was, Jesus said, I am. Can you think of any better steps to follow in than Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He did always those things that pleased the Father. Abraham didn't do always those things that pleased the Father, even though he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Are you listening? Neither yield ye your members as instruments unto unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are what? Alive from the dead. Are you listening? Crucified with Christ, but resurrected, raised up with Christ through the operation of God, through faith, alive from the dead, in your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? But under grace? God forbid. God forbids it. Right? Shouldn't that be enough? God forbid. Praise the Lord. Know ye not that they that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Amen. But thank, thank, but God be thanked that you were servants of sin. You were. Past tense. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you being then made free from sin. From sin. Free, made. It's not, it's not instant. It's a process. Then being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. You became. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 6 and verse 7. For he that is dead continues in sin. Is that what it says? He that is dead is freed from sin. Did you know that sin is anything that is not of faith. Anything that is not of faith is sin. That's right. Unbelief is sin. Anything that's not of faith is sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once unto sin, or sent unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Liken, reckon, or likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. If you're children, then heirs and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be what? That we may be also glorified together. Anybody listening? Glorified with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. It's one thing to be called. It's another thing to be justified. And it's a whole other thing to be glorified. Jesus said there was 30-fold, some 60-fold, and 100-fold. The called are the 30-fold. That's the measure of seed of the call those that are called out of the world into the church. Are you listening? And then those that are called go on to be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? And they move into the area of being justified. Not just called, but justified. Now, you don't have to be filled with the Holy Ghost to be justified. Just being forgiven of your sins, he justifies us, just as if we'd never done it. Are you listening? But just because you're called doesn't mean you're saved. you got to answer that call. you got to come out of the world, right? That's what the word ecclesia is. It's the Greek word for church. You're not part of the church if you're not called out of the world. But then you got to answer that call. And that's where forgiveness comes in. That's where the cross comes in. Amen. That's where we are forgiven of our sins, cleansed of our sins, and we're justified through faith by the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus. But then you go on from justification into sanctification and being filled with the Holy Ghost, and ultimate is being glorified with Christ. Are you listening? And being glorified with Christ is the hundredfold. Not everybody is going to attain to perfection. Are you listening? Some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. Anybody listening? When I'm talking about perfection, I'm not talking about being saved, born again. I'm not talking about being justified. I'm talking about spiritual perfection. Totally perfect. Like Jesus. Perfect. Without fault. Without blame. Are you listening, people? Now, the church is going to be glorified as a whole. But they're not going to be glorified and raised up into that throne with Christ. The church will be round about the throne, but the bride of Christ will be seated with Christ in his throne. Are you listening? And that's what we see. That's what we see in the scripture. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance 
in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. This is what the bride is going to experience. Are you listening? This is the operation of God in the life of those that are going to be raised up with Christ to be seated with him in his throne. The power of the resurrection, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Anybody listening? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He hath put under all things under him, his feet and given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Which he wrought in Christ. Let's read this again. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now, Is there a scripture that helps us to understand that we are to experience the same thing that Jesus did in being raised up to be seated with the Father? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Are you listening? The same exact wording. For Jesus being raised up to be seated with the Father at the right hand. Is the same words being used for the believer. For the overcomer. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Last but not least, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Do you see what Paul was talking about when he said, oh, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, being made conformable unto his death. Paul was reaching for perfection, to be glorified with Christ. Are you? Are you reaching for the ultimate, brothers and sisters, to be glorified with Christ, to be seated with him, to be raised up with him? Just because you're called is not enough. Just because you've been justified is not enough. Just because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost is not enough. you got to go on to perfection. you got to go on to be glorified. Hallelujah to God. To be transformed, changed, and be glorified. To be raised up, to be seated with Christ in his throne. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the ultimate. Amen. I don't know how many of you made it this far, how many of you are able to hang on. But if you have, then you got the full blessing. Amen. Those that didn't make it very far, they won't get the full blessing. Amen. But you're blessed. Praise God. Highly favored, blessed of God, if you made it all the way to the end of this message. Praise God. There are not very many in this hour that are enduring sound doctrine. They want something that tickles their ears. They want something that is a fable or something, something that is not real, sadly. They're being turning their ears away from the truth and into fables. 
Amen. This is not a fable. Amen. This is not a triology. This is not some franchise in Hollywood. This is the real deal. This is the real thing. This is genuine. Just look at these verses, folks. Ephesians. Just look at these verses. Look at this. Look at this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is through the operation of God, through faith, brothers and sisters. You believe God to do it. And what he's promised, he's well able to perform. Amen? That same mighty power, that same resurrection power is going to raise the bride to glory, to the throne. We read of this in, uh, in, in, in about when we read about Hannah in, in Samuel. We read about how God gave her a revelation from a beggar in the dunghill to be raised up to inherit the throne of glory, to be raised up with princes. Amen. Glory to God. This seems to be the revelation that God has been trying to get through to humanity all the way back to the garden. To sit with him. To be seated with him. To rule with him. This seems like this is what God, you look at the book of Revelation, to every church age, to him that overcometh. The invitation has gone out. Amen. We need to quit looking around, saying, well, they're not overcoming. Stop it. Stop comparing yourself with others. Are you? Are you overcoming? Are you overcoming? That should be the most important thing. Are you overcoming? Never mind if others are overcoming. Are you overcoming? Let me tell you this. If you truly are overcoming, you're helping others to overcome. Because if you're not overcoming yourself, you can't help someone else to overcome. Amen. Praise God. The way God designed this is as we speak the truth in love, we grow. That's why he said to Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Right? Praise God. If you take the time to feed yourself, and you feed others, you grow, and they will grow. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, and that's why we see Jesus. Just before he says this about being an overcomer, what does he say? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him, and he with me. He's trying to give you and I a meal that will produce overcomers. If we won't eat now, if we won't sup with him now, the church is going to during the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Are you listening? Going to be nurtured from the face of the serpent for three and a half years. You can either eat now, you eat later, but you're going to lose out if you eat later. There's rewards you're going to miss out on. Amen. Not everyone's going to receive a hundredfold. 30, some 60, and a hundredfold. 
Amen. Praise God. So don't just let this be another message or don't just look for another preacher to give you another message about the resurrection. Let that resurrection power, that mighty power, that operation of God, let it operate in you. Let his power raise you up to be seated with him in his throne. God bless you. Satan rages, we cannot be defeated.